A few weeks ago, we did a video about some of the new AI additions to Photoshop. And the big one, of course, is generative fill, which allows you to add things in your photo, use it to remove things. Really, really, you can use it to change your photo quite dramatically if you want to. Well, Photoshop have made it a lot easier to do one specific thing with that, which is expanding your photo. Maybe changing the aspect ratio, just expanding those borders, maybe fixing bad crop or a bad framing when you're taking the photo, which I know I've certainly done in the past. We're going to take a look at just how easy it is because it really is it's very, very easy to do this now. It's a really interesting thing. Let's dive into Photoshop. It's tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each and each and every Tuesday we bring you a brand new fresh photography tutorial. This week, like I say, let's dive into Photoshop. First up, I'm going to show you exactly where we can get this. I've got the Creative Cloud uh, app open here. We're going to come down to Beta Apps. This is in the Photoshop Beta. So if you come down to Beta Apps here on the left, you can click on the Photoshop Beta here. Make sure it's up to date. There was a new update that came out, I think, a couple of days ago. Let's click Open. That's going to open up the Photoshop beta where we can try this. Now, of course, in the past, this was called Generative Fill, which is obviously still part of this. This new feature is called Generative Expand. Uh, we're going to take a look at that now. Let's start off by looking at this photo here. This is some waterfalls in South Wales, and I'm actually really happy with this photo. I really liked the kind of hike out to find this. It was a whole thing. It poured with rain. The sun came out just as I got here. Loved it. But what if I want to make this a little bit a little bit less tight? It's quite a tight crop, right? Well, let's go ahead and just click the crop tool here. Let's expand this out, certainly to the left, maybe, maybe down below a little bit. Maybe make this a little bit, a little bit of height up here, but but make sure we've got this out to the left. Well, as we do that, this contextual taskbar down here will have generative expand a little box right there, which is different to generative fill because essentially it's going to fill in those areas we've just cropped this out to to fill in the rest of the photo. So we can click generative expand. It's exactly like generative fill. We can either type something in that we want to put in there or we can leave it blank. I'm going to leave it blank. I'm going to click generate and Photoshop's going to do its thing. And look at that. That looks fantastic. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And of course, just like with generative fill, we've got three options to choose from. So up here on the right, let's click another one. That looks quite good. That one is the one. That actually looks a lot like the area, actually, over here, which is crazy. So that's pretty impressive. I would be very, very happy with that. It's maybe a nicer composition, actually. And if you want to change the aspect ratio, you can make it a little bit taller if you want to, if you don't want it so wide. But I, I actually really like that. That's probably, that's probably a better end result photo. And maybe I should have taken it a little bit wider like that. Let's take a look at another photo. This is the same sort of area. Again, waterfall in South Wales, same hike that I was on, going through the forest and all that kind of fun stuff. Now, I like this photo, but I think that it would be better if it was cropped more like this. Maybe I'll have a little bit more at the bottom here. And maybe a little bit more height as well. So turn this into almost more of a, a portrait kind of look. We can just go ahead. We don't have to type anything in here. Let's click generate. Photoshop's going to do its thing, fill in those blank areas. And look at that. That's great. That's so, so good. And again, we can cycle through the options. All good, actually. This is definitely going to be a useful tool for changing composition, for changing framing, for getting things kind of how they should have been, especially if you're in a bit of a rush when you take the photo, if you need to nail that moment and then you get to the computer later and you realize I didn't quite nail the composition. This is quite a useful way to fix that, actually. I think that's really interesting. Let's take a look at another one here. So I really like this photo. This was taken on the Fujifilm 18 millimeter lens, which is actually really nice. It's quite a stylized photo, to be honest. It's quite a, a, a color graded kind of image. So it'd be interesting to see how it handles this. What if we want to turn this into more of a kind of panorama style? image something like this let's uh let's go ahead and generate that let's pull it out to the sides and see what this looks like i'll be particularly interested to see what this looks like because we've got so much light on one side and then darkness on the other and then of course they're, they're quite contrasting colors wow look at that that is really cool actually i really really like that actually i could imagine that on a wall let's try something a little bit more tricky let's try something in maybe a cityscape or or something with people do you know what? I've got the perfect photo, actually, because I did mess this up. So this is a photo that I took at sunset. There was the kind of murmuration over the pier. The colors were crazy. And I messed up the composition. I really, 
you know, I, I shouldn't have cut off the end of the period. I have no idea why I did it. Let's see what Photoshop does with this. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not expecting it to be perfect, but I guess we'll see what happens, right? I've just pulled that out to the left. Let's just, just see what happens here with this particular one. Okay, so it's just, it's just actually adding on. Actually, do you know what? We've got the other options. Let's try something like that. Wow, look at that. So that's really good as well, actually. That's really good. But look at this one. And of course, we can we can also just click generate again up here to get three new kind of generated parts. But that is remarkable, actually. Look at that. That's a bit weird. That's pretty good as well, actually. Wow. I'd be I'd be quite happy with that as well. But something like that, something like that is really, really good. And we could then go in actually and remove that that kind of weird lamp post if we wanted to. Let's just hit generate one more time. That's actually pretty interesting. That's not bad, but it's added in. I mean, I get it, but it's added in kind of an island, I guess, in the in the distance. And that's pretty cool as well. But look, I think one something like that, I think probably this one is the one I would go with. And I might then just go in and remove that, that lamppost, which is a little bit weird. But otherwise, that actually is a real use case where, for me, that would fix this photo. Now, obviously nothing's going to be getting the photo right in camera in the moment, but sometimes that just doesn't happen. And being able to fix it quite easily and quickly is huge. That's a huge thing because I've never been to the pier when it was quite this perfect. That kind of painterly sky, the murmuration. Yeah, quite something special. So being able to fix that that's always bothered me, that photo. So that's really interesting. And then, of course, I've got this portrait of me where I've cut off the top of my head. So let's just let's just bring that up, bring it out to the sides a little bit. Not too far, actually. Let's do something like let's do something like that. That's kind of all round, just making this a little bit wider. So <laughs> that just looks real. That just looks that just looks like my hair and everything is basically correct. Let's look at a couple of different options. That could also be my hair. That could also be my hair. That's crazy. Now, we did look at this photo before when we looked at just generative fill, but that is so easy to do with generative expand. And I think that's probably the main thing with generative expand. It's already the way that I would use generative fill. Probably 95% of the time I would actually use it. The other 5% being to actually remove kind of bigger parts of a photo that I want to get rid of. Actually expanding a photo, that's genuinely very, very useful. And for lots and lots of different things. If you have a very nice image, but you need it in a very different aspect ratio, maybe for a banner or anything like that, for commercial use like that, it's going to be really useful to do that kind of thing. Fixing photos that you just got wrong in the moment. There's lots of ways that this could be really, really useful. And I think we're probably going to have to embrace the fact that AI is going to be a bigger and bigger part of this process. Of course, you don't have to use it. And actually, I think there's going to be a place for specifically not using AI. I think that photography without AI or without AI enhancements or anything like that might become its own kind of Thing, a bit like film photography now at some point maybe i'm looking too far in the future but it's a really interesting thing to see where we go with it what happens with it i'd love to know your thoughts what do you think about this is this something you would use i think ease of use here is the biggest thing it's it's one click you crop out you click generate it's done it's um it's pretty impressive stuff but what do you think about this and how far would you be willing to go would you use it to fix a photo or would you just use it, like I say, in the case where you've got a nice photo, but then it needs to be used for a specific purpose, like let's say a banner, nice and wide, but you don't want to crop in too much, so you just fill out those edges using Generative Expand. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Pop them down in the comments, because this is such an interesting topic to talk about, so let me know. Otherwise, a few topics we've got coming up on Tutorial Tuesday. We're going to talk about time lapses, how to make them from start to finish, so actually doing them in camera and then editing them on your computer as well. We're going to talk about HDR, so bracketing your photos, why you should do it, when you should do it, and how useful it can be. We're going to dive into Capture One as well, see kind of some of the new stuff that's going on over there. But let me know if there's anything specific that you'd like us to cover in a future tutorial. I always want to make the stuff that you guys want to see. So let me know down in the comments. Otherwise, don't forget to like and subscribe. Of course, there's a list of all the equipment we used for all these photos and this video and everything as well down in the description. I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, Thanks for watching.